This nibble originally aired on RSBNB Update, episode 807, Rocking Out with Raksha. Enjoy. Uh, the mini quest, uh, the, f- the whole purpose of the mini quest is you talk with Lana Kea and she wants to figure out what's inside of this area. And uh, you, you, as the world guardian, have to go in there and siphon away the shadow anima. Because as we know, for everybody else in this world, shadow anima is dangerous except for us. Because we have that tiny little bit of uh, shadow anima protection that was put inside of us at, uh, at the end of the world wakes part of Guthix's gift that he gave us and we siphon away the shadow anima and then you can go and unlock this door that is glowing that is glowing purple after you talk with Lanakea and now the interesting the interesting part about this is that when you open this door you have to tell Lanakea that you know, you have to go back. You can't be here with me because this is a dangerous area for you, and uh, it's not gonna it's not gonna be good for your health and well being, and it's gonna kill you because Shadow Anima and you, as the World Guardian, know how to handle it. And you know, you just mosey on in down there, walk down the bridge, and who do you find down there? Bam! You find Zaros, and he oh, takes you. Showing up. Yeah. And you know he showed up in the uh, the care pack track too, so he has been uh, around Anachrony. And the time frame that was given in this was a few months, so uh, you know I, I don't think it's too surprising on this. But then you're presented with the graphic cutscene that uh, we saw at uh, the reveal from last week's live stream uh, that we talked about. But um, maybe I'll, I'll just ask you guys this week, uh, since you, both of you weren't here to discuss this, uh, David and Questcaping, what do you guys uh, think about okay, uh, so, the, the cutscene that we have here? Yeah, so that's where we've got the reveal that, well, the, the monolith at the Archaeology Guild was, in fact, the Elder Codex. We've got that Elder Artifact right in the middle of the archaeology. And uh, there's quite something up with it from the looks of things. For instance, we find out in this very cutscene that Raksha was a regular old Rex that stumbled on into it and popped out sometime later as the massive beast we see before us today. Hmm. And powered by Shadow Anima, no less. And that's particularly interesting, isn't it? Because... Elder Gods and Shadow Anima don't mix, and yet here we have something massively Shadow Anima-powered popping out of an Elder Artifact. Yeah. and so There's a lot to think about. Yeah, and, you know, I'm wondering if there was, uh, if, if there was anything with this that is directly related to the storyline that we're going to see, or if this is kind of a bit of an offshoot. I'm specifically talking about, about Raksha. Because the sense I mm-hmm. got from this, did you get the sense that... Um, Raksha, the dinosaur wandering into the Codex, was an accident and not intentional. Yeah, and it's like we are, well, so Guildmaster Tony also he's our previous example of someone being sucked into the Codex. And we do have a question mm. on that, that later. Yeah, um, we do. Yes. So that that one should be fun to discuss. And you know what I think we get from this at the end of the day, and and I think there's two ways we go from this, is that um, the Dragonkin were ultimately studying Raksha after it went back to the island and they had managed to imprison it here, and your goal as the adventurer is to kill it, or subdue it at least, so that it's not going to, you know, break out, which which I think is, is, you know, fairly uh, to be expected from all of this at the end of the day. But... Do you think that there was anything, and this is a question for all of you here, do you think there was anything malicious with Raksha? Do you think Zaros is trying to let it loose to have it do something as an example? Or do you think maybe Karapak wanted to let it loose? Because remember, when his device was shut down, that's what caused Raksha to start to become a problem. That's um, taken away when you talk to the Keeper. I'm not sure if there's anything in particular along those lines. As far as Zaros goes, as we see in the mini quest, he basically runs off and leaves us to it. Yeah. And 
I guess, yeah, gives us free reign to do whatever we want with this monster. And us being the world guardian, we do actually occasionally have to guard the world sometimes. And yep, so we put the thing back to sleep as is the boss fight. As for Kerapak, he worked with a historic... Hmm. I'm not sure if he'd necessarily have anything further he'd like to do with it. Um, but there is a thing that appeared in the Orthon lore do, do you mind if I talk about this now? Yeah, yeah. Do that, then we'll get into uh, the boss yeah. itself. Yeah. As far as Karapak's study goes, it, he's... There's something rather intriguing that's been left hanging from the Orthon lore books. He, he said something about having spent some time with Raksha and having had a symbol of a circle flanked by two triangles transmitted into his head. And he believes that's where Raksha got its powers from. Hmm. So Karapak... Yeah, and where have we last, seen that symbol before, right? Left off. Yeah. It's not, it's not something... I recognize, or not something that, as far as I'm aware, anyone really recognizes. But for all we know, it may well be something that crops up again in future. So keep an eye out. Circle flanked by two triangles. Amazing. Uh, I'm I'm no lore expert, but I've learned to blame everything that could be blamed on Carapac on Carapac. So, so oh yeah, I think that's pretty yeah, safe. That's what I'm going with. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Um, do we want to? Are there any other questions or? things we want to mention about the keeper and you know i would recommend that everybody if you don't if you even don't intend on fighting the boss go do this mini quest talk to the keeper uh it'll get you up to date on everything that's happening anachronia lore wise uh fun little tidbits here and there uh anything you guys want to point out before we move on to the boss itself yeah absolutely so the keeper we find out he is a dragonkin who's been left in there just to just as the living security system for Aksha. Um, yeah. We and can have a chat with him. We can talk about how he ended up there. And through that, anyone who's done the Orphan lore books gets a bit of dialogue that you can only unlock when you've unlocked those lore books, finding out that, in fact, this guy is Varanus, one of the Dragonkin, one of the Nodon Dragonkin, and the hunter who brought Raksha down... And presumably got killed in the first place. And this is interesting because Orthon Dick site, the very first site is supposedly Varanus' tomb. Yep. Everyone's just been toiling away in there, yep. leveling up their archaeology in the place where we thought this guy was dead. Yep. And Turns out, nope. And the keeper also makes reference that, you know, as an archaeologist, you've discovered some tombs elsewhere on the island that look like they were broken out of. And he says, yeah, that's, this was me. <laughs> so, I mean, th there's confirmation of that right there, that that was Varanus, and here is where Varanus met, or went, rather. So, mm -hmm. Well, thanks to Karapak, of course. There's another... Always Karapak. Yeah, and, you know, it just raises the question oh, yeah, that it's... there's so much more happening here uh, below the surface than uh, we initially knew. And I, and I think it's really, really starting to form itself... Um, Mm -hmm. all well together. You can find full episodes of RSBNB Update right here on this YouTube channel. If you found this video useful or just enjoyed it, like and subscribe or leave a comment.